Well, hello, Tim Nelson. And thought, whoa, Sonia, look out. Careful. No idiot. Watch out for that. Well, hello, Tim Nelson. Thought I'd come out here and tell you a little bit about myself. I uh, used to work with racehorses and and in the uh, late 90s, I wound up moving on to 10 acres out in the middle of uh, central, south central Oregon. I was at about 400 foot elevation. And uh, my parents got old. So around 2000, late 2006, I moved back to Portland, which is something I never thought I would do. And things got a little crazy around there since I had moved away. So kind of really didn't even recognize the city anymore. So eventually uh, my mom died and I had to move in with my dad and it took me a few years to talk him into moving but we finally moved uh, quite a bit north and so this is why I'm able to get out here in the woods but uh, my dad's also the reason that I really can't uh, get out in the woods as much as I would like to. He's uh, almost 94 and you know, I'm kind of having to be around about noon, get him up, get him his pills, and he's at a point where he's spending about 18 hours in uh, bed a day. So I try to get him up around four or five, and he's uh, lately been staying up till 11 or 12. So I can't really get up in the morning and uh, early as I'd like to get out here and go hunting because I'm just too tired at five in the morning. So my deer season's kind of shot, but while I was in Portland, though, I uh, saw these people riding around on these uh, little kids' bikes and wondered what that was all about, and it turned out to be something called zoo bombing. So I put together a little bike. Uh, I had drop handlebars, banana seat, and I'll show you a picture of it. So my top speed on that little bike was uh, about 52 miles an hour. And then eventually I had to uh, get up to a little bit bigger bike. The little one had 16-inch uh, wheels, and the bigger one uh, wound up getting on 20-inch wheels. My hips were just getting a little rough for sitting there all cramped up. So you heard some shooting there. These guys are up on the end of the road here, uh, do a little skeet practice with their shotgun. And sounds like they might be about done now. 
So anyway, uh, that's kind of in a nutshell what I've gone through the last 20 years. And so I'm just, uh, you know, when my dad decides to pass on, I'm going to hopefully have enough money left over after I sell the house and everything, pay off all the bills, uh, get a few acres out in the woods and get back off grid again. As that's where I was at, uh, southern Oregon. Uh, solar panels, generator to get me through the winter. Had my own well. And a lot of game around, you know, I was able to not have to go to the grocery store, but about once a month, get basics, pay some bills, and had a propane tank I had to keep filled. And phone bill, a few things like that, so. Anyways, uh, I enjoy being up here, and I just wish I had more time to spend out in the woods. I'm a lot more comfortable in the woods than I am in any city. Don't matter which one it is, it's just I prefer being out in the woods. I've uh, always been camping ever since I was a kid, and my dad didn't uh, want to go out and, you know, rough it out in the woods. He always uh, rented a cabin by a lake or something like that for his vacation, and that's as much as uh, he liked to be out in the woods. So he was a Navy man. He's used to a warm bed and dry ground. So when I went in the Army, he was just kind of wondering uh, why I'd want to sleep in the dirt all the time. Well, you know, I've been doing that since I was a kid. So I was in the Boy Scouts for a while, and then uh, I got a little older once I got out of the Army. Had a, yeah, they're leaving. Got the hill to myself, but uh, come up here to hunt a little grouse, but I think they chased them all off the mountain with their shooting. So anyways, uh, got out of the Army, bounced around a lot of jobs, and finally found one I liked and wound up getting my back hurt. So compressed some discs, and eventually I had surgery. And that's how I wound up working with racehorses. I was too much of a liability for anybody to want to hire, so uh, people at the racetrack didn't care. You know, as long as you're able to do the work, uh, they put you to work. So seven days a week and for about seven months out of the year. And then uh, for a while I was going around uh, different tracks in the summertime and kind of got tired of that. So I wound up uh, being a horseshoer. And so during the summer I'd go trim and shoe horses for a week or two. And then I'd go out in the woods for a week or two and come back into town, replenish stuff and uh, shoe a few more horses, trim a few. and back out in the woods again so anyway uh that's uh kind of about it in a nutshell about me uh i just uh always been an outdoors kind of guy and i'm just like I say you know i'm just more at home out here so anyway uh i'm gonna uh cut this short and that's kind of basically it about me so Hopefully uh, I'll be able to get back off grid again and uh, you know I'm not wishing my dad an early demise but uh, I'm no spring chicken either. I'll be uh, 64 pretty soon. So hopefully uh, when he does pass on I'll still have a little bit of youth left in me to be able to get off grid. So just a small cabin, wood stove, you know as long as I've got water I'll be okay. I'm not sure uh, about uh, posting any videos at that point so this will kind of have to do me until I move and figure out what I'm going to do. Uh, if I can afford it I'll get a satellite dish and be able to upload otherwise I'll have to go in and uh, borrow free Wi-Fi someplace and hopefully I can upload quick enough on the Wi-Fi to be able to still post a video once in a while. So anyways uh, like I say I'm going to keep this short so Y'all take care and I'll uh, see you on the next one.